Hello dear students, welcome to our learning program Ready to Run, produced by Rwanda Education Board in partnership with UNICEF and Inspire, Educate and Empower Rwanda. My name is Teacher Jen and I teach Geography Senior 6. I know that you are at home and that you have been doing some chores to help your parents. It is good to support your parents at home. Now, it is time to learn. But before we start, I want us to talk of an important point of our health. Remember that the world is threatened by the pandemic of coronavirus. You know it. I am sure you know it. For this, let us respect and practice the recommendations set by the World Health Organization and our Ministry of Health. Hand washing will help us to protect us against the coronavirus. Also, remember to avoid touching your mouth, eyes and nose to stop coronavirus from entering your bodies. I hope you have a pen, a notebook, a student book if you can get it, or any other resource that will help you during this lesson. Dear students, before we break off, remember we concluded our lesson on wave erosion and deposition. Can you give us a short summary of what we learned? 20 seconds. Give us a short summary of what we learned. I'm proud of you. We saw different coastal landforms, types, factors and action of waves. We also learned how coastal landforms are formed their importance, types of cost, sea level change, among others. Today, we are going to run a new unit that will be rocks and minerals. And I want us to set a common target. Do you agree with me? Particularly for today, I wish that by the end of the lesson, you will be able to define the term rock, to explain different types of rocks, Classify them and discuss the, their characteristics. You can get our lesson in the student book, page 146. To start, I'm going to ask you a small question. Are you ready? And I'm sure you know it because you ran it in the previous years. What does the term rock mean for you? List two types of rocks you know. Think for 10 seconds and say it loudly. I can hear you. You did it right. A rock is a natural combination of solid mineral particles such as gravel, feldspar, iron oxide, quartz, and other elements which form the solid part of the earth's outer layer called the crust. A rock can also be defined as a coherent consolidated and compact mass of two or more minerals. Rocks are everywhere in the ground, forming mountains, and at the bottom of the oceans. In many areas, rocks are covered with several layers of soil. Rocks contain many valuable minerals, for example, diamond, iron ore, aluminium, and gold, among others. As you have said it, we have different types of rocks with their own characteristics. Rocks can be grouped according to their mode of formation or according to their age. Today, let's focus on the grouping of rocks according to their mode of formation. According to mode of formation, rocks are in three major types which include igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. What does the word igneous rock tell you what does it tell you some of you have tried to define it and give different characteristics the word ignis comes from the latin word ignis which means fire ignis fire igneous rocks are formed by cooling of molten material from a volcano or from deep inside the earth. 
This molten material from the inside the earth is known as, who can tell us, is known as, great, it is known as magma. The molten material from inside the earth is known as magma. Igneous rocks are called magmatic rocks or volcanic rocks. Their formation is associated with the cooling and hardening of molten material from the interior of the earth. This is igneous rock. The second one is, as you have said it, sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are the result of the accumulation of small pieces broken off from pre-existing rocks, meaning igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, and sedimentary rocks, and from dead plants and animals that have been eroded or precipitation of dissolved minerals. Sedimentary rocks form when sediments become pressed or cemented together or when sediments precipitate out of solution. Sedimentary rocks are also referred to as stratified or layered rocks. We can say sedimentary rocks, stratified rocks, or layered rocks. It is the same. The third type is metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks get their name from meta. Meta means change. And morph meaning form. Metamorph. Metamorphic rocks are from pre-existing rocks due to increase in heat and pressure, which alter rocks structure and chemical composition. Do you understand? If you understand, thumbs up. Great. Therefore, sedimentary and igneous rocks can become metamorphic rocks. Now, I want you to think. From the previous classes, senior 2, senior 1, senior 3, senior 4, senior 5, you learned something on rocks, isn't it? Can you remind me at least one key characteristic for each rock? Think and tell us. One key characteristic for each rock. Thank you very much. Let's start by the characteristics of igneous rocks. They are formed by cooling of magma, which solidifies into the earth's crust. Another characteristic, they contain crystals after cooling. They have a lot of minerals, and they do not contain strata or layers. They do not have plants and animal remains. Igneous rocks are hard rocks, and water doesn't pass through their joints easily. That's why they are less affected by erosion. Normally, igneous rocks are less affected by erosion. Now, let's classify the igneous rocks. There are variations of igneous rocks in terms of chemical and mineralogical characteristics, texture, forms, and size of grains, and mode of origin. Scientists group them into four. In the classification based on amount of silica, we will have acidic igneous rocks, meaning they have more silica, and basic igneous rocks having low amount of silica. Based on chemical and mineral composition, it makes felsic igneous rocks. These are composed of the dominant mineral of the right groups of silicon and aluminium. After felsic, we have mafic igneous rocks composed of the dominant mineral of dark group, magnesium and iron. Basing on texture of grains, we will have pegmatitic igneous rocks, very coarse grained igneous rocks. We will have phaneritic igneous rocks, fine grained igneous rocks. We will have glassy igneous rocks, with grains of any size, and porphyritic igneous rocks. These are mixed grains. These are mixed grain igneous rocks. So you understand, based on chemical and mineral composition, we will have felsic, mafic, pegmatitic, phaneritic, glassy, and 
porphyritic igneous rocks. Now, when we base on mode of occurrence, we will have also two types, intrusive igneous rocks formed when the rising magma during volcanic activity does not reach the earth's surface but rather cools and solidifies below the surface of the earth. These are intrusive igneous rocks. The second classification according to mode of occurrence is extrusive igneous rocks due to the cooling and solidification of rising magma during volcanic activity in cracks, pores, and hollow places just beneath the Earth's surface. These were igneous rocks. Welcome back. Now, let's look at characteristics of sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed from sediments from other rocks, plants, and animal remains. Sedimentary rocks are found over the largest surface area of the globe. They are very many. They have various minerals because they are product of different sources. Sedimentary rocks are characterized by different sizes of joints. They contain several layers or strata. These layers of sedimentary rocks are seldom found in original and horizontal manner. They contain fossils. This is different from igneous rocks because we saw that they don't contain fossils. They don't contain animal and human remains. Sedimentary rocks contain fossils. They are non-crystalline because they do not form under heat. Remember we saw that igneous rocks are in forms of crystals. Now, the sedimentary rocks are non-crystalline because they do not form under heat. Most of them allow liquids and gases to pass through them. This is also different from igneous rocks because we saw that igneous rocks don't allow liquids and gases to pass through them easily. Now, I'm going to challenge you. From what you learned in Senior 2, can you classify the sedimentary rocks? Think, write, and share with us. What are the classifications of sedimentary rocks? Fantastic! I like you because you don't forget what you have learned in the previous years. On the basis of the nature of sediments, we have mechanically formed sedimentary rocks. These are formed when inorganic rocks particles are weathered, eroded, and deposited, and compacted in layers Mechanically formed sedimentary rocks are formed when inorganic rocks are weathered, eroded, deposited, and compacted in layers. We can have examples like sandstones, sandstones, and clay. After mechanically formed sedimentary rocks, we have organically formed sedimentary rocks. These are rocks formed from the composition of plant and animal remains which accumulate over time when the plants and animals die. Example, we have limestone and coals. We have also chemically formed sedimentary rocks. These are formed from precipitation and evaporation of salt solutions, for example, salt, gypsum, Chuck from Musanze. If you are from Musanze, I'm sure you know what we are saying when you talk of chalk, when you talk of gypsum, you know it. Now, what are the characteristics of metamorphic rocks? There are four factors that contribute to the formation of metamorphic rocks. The first one is heat or high temperature. We have high pressure. We have the nature of the parent rock and the time. These are the four factors contributing to the formation of metamorphic rocks. Let's start with heat or high pressure. This speeds up the chemical reactions result in the metamorphic rocks. 
the heat from magma, steam from hot water, and rocks sinking deeper into the warmer layer of the crust. Do you get me? Great. The second is high pressure, which changes the mineral and fear of the origin rock. While the nature of the parent rock will determine how resistant it is to change. Then time will determine the period required for the chemical reactions to take place. Thank you. Now, can you stand up? Let's relax. I will count one, two, one, two, and you will be moving your legs starting from right leg to left leg. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, 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 one, two. Sit down. Thank you. Now, let's try to classify the metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are broadly classified into two groups. We have metasedimentary or parametamorphic rocks. These are metamorphic rocks formed due to the alteration of the forms of sedimentary rocks, for example, marabo from limestone, quartzite from sandstones, and so on. The second classification is metaigneous or orthometamorphic rocks, representing the metamorphic rocks formed due to change in the form of igneous rocks, for example, gneisses from granite, serpentine from gabbro, among others. Dear students, now let's summarize our lesson of today with a focus on the highlights. Are you ready? What have we learned today? Take a piece of paper and write down five sentences describing or summarizing what we have learned today. Yes, today we looked at the rocks, their characteristics and their classification. We saw that the rocks are divided into three types that are igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. We have also seen that their types, their characteristics and their classification vary according to their mode of formation, where they were formed and their constituents among others. It is now time for a take home as usual. It has a range of questions from the start of the unit to help you in revision. Can you note them down? Question number one, in which area of Rwanda do we find igneous rocks? Explain their characteristics. I want you to write one page, one page talking of the areas of Rwanda where we get or where we can find igneous rocks and their characteristics. One page. Question number two. From the observation you have done before the lockdown due to coronavirus, classify the rocks found in your environment, classify them in major groups and give two examples for each of them. From the observation you have done before the lockdown due to coronavirus, classify the rocks found in your environment, classify them in major groups and give two examples for each of them. Dear students, remember you are in senior six, you have to sit for the national exam, prepare it and get ready. Learning is the key for our future. Thank you for tuning in. If you can make a phone call, invite your friends and classmates to follow the lessons of geography on radio. You are with teacher Jen. See you soon.